So let's do it. Welcome back to Classic Replay. In this episode, we look at the top 40 Game Boy games to play before you die. One word, escapism. Long before smartphones invaded nearly every area of our lives, we had the Game Boy. It provided a cheap and affordable night in and became a good safeguard against the British weather. By 1997, over 64 million Game Boys were sold. Nintendo had effectively run the Sega Game Gear out of town. This is my top 40 and we kick things off with Avenging Spirit. This one arrived in 92 and the best way to describe it is a demonic version of Kirby. You've been murdered by the local mobsters and now you're a spirit out for revenge. This is a fantastic little game to rediscover. The developers have done a stellar job. It's nothing short of miraculous. It runs at a wonderful solid frame rate. Controls feel tight and responsive and it's a breeze to play. This game is no joker. Right, that's it, stop. End the video there. No more bad jokes, I promise. This for me is a great little meaty game. A graphical powerhouse. It's polished to Game Boy perfection. Bionic Commando is littered throughout with masses of all-out carnage and action. It has to be said, in my humble opinion, one of the most impressive games I've seen on the Game Boy thus far. It's crazy to think that such a heavyweight behemoth has been squeezed down into the little Game Boy. I think they've almost managed to squeeze the entire experience onto this handheld. If you like your platformers with a twist, Castlevania is certainly the most recommended. Contra is proof that the Game Boy can handle 16-bit games. It's easier to play than its bigger sister, but when it comes to action, it won't let you down. The original SNES game is one of my all-time favourites, and this Game Boy version has captured it perfectly. If you're looking to dust off that Game Boy, Contra is the excuse you've been waiting for. Fans of the arcade original should be over the moon with this conversion. For sure, there's a few minor flaws, but it's still a must play and collect if you still own a Game Boy. Double Dragon has aged really well. I mean, just look at the sprites and that detailed background. It's easily as good as any other arcade conversion and comes with thumping music throughout. This one not only takes me back, but I shed a tear. Kong is still great and king on the Game Boy. It will test your game playing skills to the limit. You'll curse this game, throw the cartridge across the room, not play it for weeks on end. But trust me, that doesn't mean you won't be obsessed with it. Now what are you waiting for? Stop monkeying around. Oh my god, I don't believe it. What's it like to drive an F1 car? No idea, never came close. What I can tell you about this game is it's very simple really. This might be a baby F1 game compared to today's standards. Still, despite being piddly, mastering it is far from easy. To enjoy it to its maximum, you'll need to dig deep. This was one of the Game Boy's party pieces. There are heroes and villains the world over. Lesser known to the world is maybe Captain Britain. Another is the bad guy from Ghost and Goblins, Firebrand. It's unique in the sense that it can't make its mind up whether it's an RPG or a platformer. It has to be said, despite the limitations of the Game Boy, this is Capcom at their best. This is basically Gauntlet 2 cut down to size for the Game Boy. 
Playing Gauntlet 2 on the Game Boy boils down to either this. You enjoy the formula or you don't. Although I've played this many times on my own, thank god there's a two player option through the link cable. The other also vital ingredient is that it plays exactly like Gauntlet 2 should. I must be ancient because I remember this as Nemesis on the Amstrad CPC. This is a really difficult game, but if you've got the fight in you, it's a really good one too. It comes packed with five levels, the power-ups are crazy, but it's the cutscenes and the in-game graphics that have to be seen to be believed for the Game Boy. Bright light! Bright light! That's exactly what I had in abundance on a trip back from a holiday in Wales as a kid. For me, what's remarkable about this game, on a console where it's inundated with platform games, this one actually stands out. The cuteness on the surface hides how difficult this game is. But for those Game Boy Warriors with perseverance amongst us, the challenge is a fantastic one and a memorable game. Just looking at the graphics, you can tell that this is NES standard sort of stuff. Apparently this was only released in Japan and Europe. America didn't uh, get this one. In a strange sort of way, it reminds me of Kung Fu Master with anime animation overload. But in all honesty, I had so much fun with this and the music is fantastic. I've never seen the movie, but from what I'm told, I didn't miss much. I first experienced Hudson Hawk on the ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC, and both of those versions blew me away. What the Game Boy version lacks in color, it more than makes up for in detail and playability. In fact, revisiting this one has made me come over all nostalgic, and I might even go as far to track down and watch the movie. It can't surely be that bad, can it? Kid Dracula is one of the most thrilling but difficult games on the Game Boy. You know instantly that you're playing a Konami game because the graphics and the attention to detail are impeccable. Castlevania fans and Mega Man fans will be right at home with this alternative platformer. To the untrained eye, people might just instantly think, cute game, looks like a Mario in Castlevania's castle, but I prefer to say it's Mario meets Mega Man in Castlevania. Everybody loves tight controls and Kid Icarus Myths and Monsters gives us just that. Pit's second adventure improves over the first NES game in several areas. The scrolling feels so much better, the cheap deaths have gone and it's everything you'd expect from Nintendo despite being one of Nintendo's often shelved mascots. There's lots of great shooting action here, death-defying jumps, leaps of faith, but more importantly, a fantastic challenge. I think it's safe to say I've played almost nearly every Kirby game ever made. I especially love his new adventures on the 3DS and the Nintendo Switch. But my heart lies with Kirby's Dream Land 2. One, because it's an improvement over the original on the Game Boy. And two, because it comes with a save feature. Despite the awful engine noise, and it truly is ear wrenching, this really is a fantastic little racer, but only with the volume turned down low. In fact, my ears are still ringing now. But me personally, I don't care what anybody says. This for me is really impressive for the Game Boy. It looks good, it moves fast, but more importantly, it's an excellent game. Crafted by Miyamoto's very own hands, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is a very deep adventure game. Simply reading about it or watching somebody play it is not enough. Miyamoto's games have to be experienced. It took a year and a half to make, with appearances throughout the game from other Nintendo staple characters. Even Kirby makes an appearance. It's the perfect Mega Man game, and it's on the Game Boy. In fact, I still revisit this often because of the graphics and soundtrack alone. Sadly, this was the last of the Mega Man titles for the Game Boy, but talk about going out with a bang. There's no question, 
This was a labour of love. In fact, from memory, uh, and that goes back a while, this is the first Mega Man game I ever completed. To all those extreme feminists out there, did you know that Samus is actually a chick? So no more cries of females aren't represented in video games. Nintendo were doing it long before this generation were in nappies. It's also safe to say that this is one of the best games from console to the portable screen. And although it's just more of the same from the original, what's wrong with that? Metroid 2 feels a little bit darker, a bit deeper, and like the games of the good old days, you'll need to map it. Does anybody remember Head Over Heels from Ocean Software? What's that you say? You've never heard of it? I must be a granddad, you say? Well, <clears throat> that's just charming, that is. Bloody charming. Anyway, forget that. This is one of the best games on the Game Boy. And I believe I've still got an actual copy of it somewhere. Allegedly, it's hard to track down, so I'm over the moon about that. The only thing I can hope is that if you've never played it before, you'll check it out. I'm a big fan of this game on the Game Boy and I also had it on the Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum, Super Nintendo and played it on the Commodore Amiga as well. The frame rate and the sound is not the greatest on the Game Boy and by all rights it shouldn't be playable but it is. If you are into your F1 games this is essential for the Game Boy. Despite the aging elements, Ninja Gaiden Shadow is an instant recommendation. Ryo Hayabuso arrived on the Game Boy in fine form. It's good to get stuck in and revisit this classic, and for me personally, the finest of the series. This really is Ninja Gaiden at its best. You'd think after 30 years, this one would be past its best, but think again. Without question, one of the best Ninja games of all time. For me, worth playing just for the music on the first three levels alone. It also turns out to be an excellent game as well. You've got to love Konami. I wish there were more than five levels. I prefer the horizontal scrolling sections to the vertical, but this is classic Contra bullet hell action. I love the fact that rapid fire now comes as default, but it's the graphics, the sprites, uh, and the animation that really shine through. This is a wonderful play and parody on Gradius, or should I say Nemesis. Set across eight stages, you get to choose from four playable ships, three lives and unlimited continues. This package all adds up to Game Boy awesomeness, and it's one I'm proud to proclaim I've beaten. For a long time, R-Type was the benchmark that all other shoot-em-ups aspired to. The first time I ever played it was on the ZX Spectrum, and that blew me away. In fact, R-Type is the game that got me into shoot-em-ups. In the absence of Bob Pape, who did the original ZX Spectrum arcade conversion, come of the hour, come of the man, step forward, Jace Austin. Oh my god. Jace Austin couldn't do this one because of time commitments. So it was up to bits to fall to another hero. Step forward, Bob Pape. On the graphics, Mark Jones. For shoot 'em up fans, the challenge, the difficulty level is just right and mimics the arcade in all but graphics. For those that need it, there's more lives and you get unlimited continues. Did I mention Dave Whittaker did the music? Argonaut have produced absolute wonders on the Game Boy. This sequel to Hard Driving on the Game Boy has to be played to be believed. You get to race around three tracks and then finally, if you beat the time, a challenge track awaits where you raced against a computer opponent. How is this even possible on the Game Boy? Robocop is a serious contender for one of my favorite games on the Game Boy. Although that last level is a bitch, I've beaten this game many times and love doing it. The movie is beyond great and this is no bad either. And don't forget that amazing Ariston advert also. I'm still humming the music. There's five stages of pulse pounding action 
and like with the ZX Spectrum version, you are certainly in for a challenge. Tam and Rit on the Game Boy, one of my favourite games of all time. As cute as this game looks, weapons are devastating. I personally thought the ZX Spectrum and Commodore Amiga versions were awesome, but this is something else. You'll find yourself increasingly outnumbered, squaring off against end of level bad guys, and climbing ladders like there's no tomorrow. Our heroes have taken a leaf out of the Flintstones, you'll be doing the Bam Bam Slam all the way. Purchased way back in 1991, I still have a mint copy. I absolutely love this game. Solar Striker is yet more proof that great graphics don't make a great game. Solar Striker does everything right. It's addictive, a fantastic challenge, and there's some great end of level bosses. And I just love that oh so sweet music. Owing its origins to classics such as Space Invaders, Galaxians, you'll have to dodge and shoot your way to victory. One word, frustrating. For me personally, the level design in this is fantastic. Luke Skywalker doesn't appear to have a face, which is a massive improvement. And despite the game's difficulty, this along with Super Star Wars on the Super Nintendo are games I love having in my collection. You'll need a Jedi-like memory and the agility of Yoda to see this one through. Most people will probably walk away at the first sight of a continue screen. If you suffer from stress in any way, shape or form, give this one a miss. For the rest of us, may the force be with you. The first Super Mario Land game on the Game Boy was awful. There you go, I've said it. I've got that huge weight off my chest now. I don't have this for the Game Boy original, but I played it recently on the Nintendo 3DS and it's just awesome. Super Mario Land 2 really makes up for the disaster that was Super Mario Land. Try not to stone me to death, but this, I believe, is probably one of my favourite games of all time. Jesus Christ on a bike, Super RC Pro-Am is awesome. I still freaking love this handheld. Having this back in the day on the go was a huge deal. Probably my most played game on the Game Boy. And long before the Need for Speed series, RC Pro-Am taught me how to drift. And screw anybody to hell who reckons the NES version is better. All we need now is RC Pro-Am upgraded for the Nintendo Switch. I'm confused, is it Ninja Turtles or Hero Turtles? I suppose it doesn't matter, but this is another great game from Konami. Fall of the Foot Clan is everything you could hope for from a Game Boy title. I quite like all of the Turtles games on the Game Boy, but this is definitely my favourite. Cowabunga! This is the game I always show off to friends, especially my Game Gear owning friends. Fans of Mario, Kirby and Sonic the Hedgehog will be right at home with this. There's two things almost guaranteed in gaming, Nintendo's brilliance and Sunsoft quality. In Trip World, you can run, jump, flap your ears and fly, or swim like a dolphin. The only reason Trip World isn't number one on my list is because, unfortunately, it's not that difficult. But trust me, it's fun whilst it lasts. If you're up for a challenge, look no further than Turrican. I originally owned this on the Alstrad CPC, that was a fantastic game. I later played it on the Commodore 64, that was even better, and then came the Amiga version. Wow. So where does this one fit in? Well, somewhere between the Commodore 64 and the Amiga version. It simply makes the list because it's one of the best games I've ever played. The music stays with you, and it's one I keep coming back to. This was one of the many reasons that I originally purchased a Game Boy. In fact, this came bundled with the Game Boy I purchased. At the time, there was nothing quite like it. It doesn't look remarkable, but it didn't need to. It's absolutely 100% addictive. I'd play it on holiday by the pool, on the bus, and on the bog. My Game Boy went everywhere with me. 
I mean everywhere. Tetris is the ultimate companion for gaming on the go. I can't tell you how much I played this game. I absolutely loved it to bit. The presentation, the sound, the music, the graphics. Come on guys, how is this even possible? Without question, the best racing game on the Game Boy. The pseudo 3D screen update is really convincing. It feels like you're going down and uphill. This is most definitely the closest the Game Boy got to Sega Rally. And it's bloody fast. So, what's cooler than one? Absolute zero. And although I never played Pokemon Red, a mate gave me a copy of Pokemon Blue, and I've never looked back. If the music isn't already cemented in your head, the experience will be. I also think that Pokemon Blue is the reason I still love RPGs. In fact, I still can't believe the impact this game had on me, and many others. Epic. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, please subscribe.